welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on the couch for this episode of the Weird Obscure World podcast. Midweek. No, yeah. not midweek. No, not midweek. This not midweek. Is, Weird news. Yeah, this is the full show. Full show. Just because we're recording this in the middle of the week because... Yeah, it's not quiet. It's I'm, Friday. Yeah, because I'm working this weekend. Yeah. But... Gotta kill that day job until right, we get a large enough subscriber base for us to buy a small island somewhere. Or rent a beach on a large island <laughs> or... <laughs> or how about yeah. enough subscriber base for us to pay for our coffee every day? <laughs> Let's start with that. Yeah, yeah. So. Weird news. Yes. Uh, remember, go to our Facebook. Uh, give it a check out. It's a uh, Wow Pod, uh, Wow Podcast. Mm-hmm. Wow on, Podcast. On Facebook. Uh, give it a look. Check it out. All our videos, links are up there. And so far, that's the most reliable way to shoot us a message. You can just... Uh, Send a message straight to us there, and also we have an admin there who can, uh, who you know, gets a hold of us and passes stuff on. Yep, James, and post stuff up there. You know, if you come across stuff, you don't even have to shoot us a message; just we, throw a post right at it. We love it. Yeah, I mean, it's become my pastime reading yeah. what is on uh, the Facebook. We love it, yeah. love it, love it. So weird news. I'm going to start. Yeah, you're going to start. I'm going to shut the ringer off on my phone. Then I'm going to start. Professional podcaster here. That's right. So my story comes from Florida. Mm. I'm wondering, you know, it was only a matter of time before the animals got in on this. In on the Florida? On the Florida man. Yeah. 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 So we've brought you a couple stories from Florida. We just, did. Just we a few. Remember, there was that guy that had the attack squirrel. These nuts. So maybe Florida man is training other animals. Yes. He saw the squirrel story. Perhaps. Perhaps. Mine is a trash panda, otherwise, otherwise known as a raccoon. We like, we're like we going to call him Rocket. The woodland bandit. <laughs> the woodland bandit. So... He's a, imagine if you're a resource officer and you're doing your rounds and you're. That's that's one of those school um, deputies or police officers that. Yeah. That assist the school with a law enforcement presence. Yeah. So you get there a little bit early. You, you know, wander through the school, check to make sure everything's copacetic. And uh, you come across a raccoon. Not your average raccoon. No, this this raccoon um, managed to get himself inside a vending machine. And uh, well, let's be honest. Could let's not get himself out because those vending machine doors. They only go one way. They only go one way. Well, I think honestly, what happened is the resource officer woke up a little late. Couldn't <laughs> hit Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> So he's like, ah, I'm going to have to go for a Snickers. Oh, yeah. So he went to go for a Snickers, and he looks inside the glass, and there's a little face. It and he jumps cute, back. It's a cute yeah. raccoon. He jumps back because all he sees is the mask. You know, he thinks it's like Zorro inside the vending machine. <laughs> no, like, first he says, is that my reflection? <laughs> and then he looks closer. I forgot to take that off. Yeah. I'm wearing my sleep mask still. <laughs> and, uh, and the... The raccoon, raccoon's looking back at him, you know, has a nutter butter in its left hand and a bag of uh, back off, salt, weirdo. salt and vinegar chips in the right. Mm-hmm. And like, what? You know, help a brother out. So not many people know, but I actually had a raccoon. We we had a pet raccoon there for a while. They, they There's a lady near where we live that does a rescue. So when the mom's been hit... Or otherwise, she rescues the babies, she removes the scent gland, she files down the canines, and she removes their, it would be akin to a dewclaw. This is sounding heinous so far. Well, she domesticates them so that 
they're not just euthanized because otherwise right. they're just killed. Uh -huh. So she domesticates them and you can... Hacks off the thumbs. Yeah. Whittles she domesticates out, them. Whittles out a scent gland. Do yeah. raccoons stink? Yeah, they've got a scent gland. Oh. Yeah, to I cover up their that. tracks. So... What does it smell like? I don't know. It was gone when I got in. Yeah. But let me tell you, they love snacks. We would often find, and they, they're in captivity when they're domesticated. They, their diets aren't as natural, so to speak. And so they get really fat. <laughs> and so our raccoon was like this big old fat guy. Mm. and Panda bear. Yeah, and we would have to lock our cabinets and our fridge because he would middle of the night just help himself to snacks mm, sounds like open uh, the cereal boy. yeah open the cereal box and just help himself so i could totally see a raccoon like visually seeing the vending machine all the bright colors and whatever and then smelling the snacks from inside and so the raccoon lines its spaceship yeah. walks into the school because yeah. you know and just walking by checking things out making sure the evil purple man isn't there that's right drops his weapon his and space gun looks off to the left and sees valhalla yeah there it is the vending machine full of uh <laughs> full of delicious goodness delicious goodness and likely he didn't want to come out no oh, i'm sure he did not yeah so what they ended up having to do is call animal control no oh, yeah and um the vending company no, obviously someone has to Someone's got to open up. Yeah, someone's got to open that machine up. They wheeled the entire machine outside and opened the door. Now, it doesn't appear that the raccoon took anything with him. Perhaps he knows where it's at now and he'll just come back and get it later. <laughs> but he he ran out unscathed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ran out unscathed. Well fed, I'm sure. When I was in Cuba, there was a uh Right by the gym, you had to walk over like this gully. It was like a, a little kind of creek. And there was some overgrowth of trees. And there was an iguana that laid there. And the average iguana is probably, all told, two and a half, three feet long. Maybe weighs seven pounds. But this iguana was about four, four and a half feet long. And probably, I think they did weigh it once, but it weighed in like 70 pounds. It was Good. a big, fat iguana. And the reason it got so big is it would lay there on its side looking like a Playboy model, you know, <laughs> one arm up and one leg up and tail stretched out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like a a Playboy model that has let herself go a little bit. But <laughs> the reason he got so big is he was by the gym. And so oh. people would get done working out and they'd buy an apple or an orange or some kind of fruit because they had like a little uh, uh, fruit concessions right there. And they would eat a little bit of it and then throw the rest to the, the iguana. To old Chubbo Mucho there. We called him Grandpa. He was an old iguana and he was huge. Was he mean? No, not at all. He'd just sit there and wait for you. You could pet him and everything, but he'd just wait. And as people walked by, they'd toss him fruit. And But he wouldn't let other iguanas anywhere near his spot. That was his corner. Well, that's where all the food is. Yeah, he had it made. Mm. And I did see lots of iguana fights. You did? Mm -hmm. Iguanas are vicious creatures with their tails. I, I just They would just rear up at each other, and I don't like... A friend of mine from way back had pet iguanas uh -huh. and they would run towards you like the lady off of that scary show you know they kind of twitch the, the the ring yeah they would twitch and run towards you all choppy and then they would flip around and they'd whip you with their tails really and their tails will lay your leg wide open really yeah you'd have to jump out i didn't the way. know that i i I never messed with the iguanas like that. I did get drunk one night, and <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think a lion crab chased me. It looked like a <laughs> soccer ball with legs underneath it. Now, it might have just been wandering around somewhere, and my drunk butt thought it was chasing me, so I ran down the pier, 
Well, I stumbled, ran, you know, drunk, ran down the pier. But in my mind, it was chasing me. Oh, and then they had kaipabaras there, which are, we called them banana rats. And they're about the size of a cocker spaniel. They look like no. an overgrown rat. Mm-mm. And a couple times I thought that they were going to get me because there were a couple this places. This is Cuba? Yeah. Mm. That you just put that on the list of places I'm never going. Well, they were friendly. Giant rats. Check. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Grandma's with you on that. But you had to walk over. Like there was this dugway built up where a sidewalk was on it. And you'd walk over it to go to the hospital. And they lived down in the dugway, down in the bottom of that, like the borrow pit. And as you're walking across, thousands of them come up and follow you, mm. just expecting you to drop a morsel of goodness. No. And then you go to the movie theater, and you're wearing flip-flops, you know, <laughs> shower shoes. <laughs> and you feel a tickle on your foot, and you look <laughs> down, and it, it ate the edge of your flip-flop so that it was perfectly matched to your foot. They would use their whiskers to guide them around. No. What? I'll never, I'll never know what that feels like. They were kind of cute. Hmm. Ooh, it's a shit nightmares are made of. I've got, I've got one full news story, and then I've got a touch on. I want to find out further review on the touch on, but I'll touch on it. So the first one is in Brandenburg, Kentucky, on uh, August sixteenth. What was that last Thursday? Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. No, today's the sixteenth. Today's the 16th. Well, then it was early this morning. Uh-huh. Brandenburg lost power. The whole city went dark. So the the light and power company went to dig out where they lost power, and they went to the to the power junction where all the power goes into. And inside one of the transformers was a huge snake. The snake was obviously electrocuted, but it had crawled in there, and once it arced off, it killed the power to the whole city. Mm. And we'll put a picture of the snake up on a, up on the Facebook and the wherevers, but it was a huge snake, and it curled itself into the, the transformer, so half of it's in, half of it's out, or a third in, a third out, and another third is wrapped around inside of it. And once it made that connection, it... It blew the transformer. And the snake. Oh, of course. Oh. Yeah. That would be a mess to clean up. Yeah, it, you could probably smell it pulling up. Mm. Like, does it, it smell like KFC? It smells like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. All right. So there's a live webcam over Loch Ness. And a guy in Hong Kong's been watching it. And... <clears throat> Let me read the name off of what I, uh, it's Urquhart, Hart, Urq Hart Bay in Loch Ness. Michael Yuen, he's a guy in Hong Kong who apparently is a, is a Nessie fan because he watches this webcam. And there have been three other sightings in the last month of, of Nessie, but this one, we've got the video proof because you can pull it up on their record of their live webcam and it's a dark figure now it's not zoomed in enough where you can actually see but it's a dark figure that moves out of the bay and moves into the deeper Loch Ness itself and he watched this on the live webcam he watched it and reported it and then you can go and uh root it out yourself or at least you could that might I say drain it I've said that all along just I drain know, it I know Pete is going to come after you. <laughs> Drain the lock. Drain the lock. Now, we touched on our midweek about uh, Television Man. The yeah, television did you, s- did you see the, the photo I shared? Yes. Yeah, we found his mate. There's truly someone for That's everyone. That's Computer Monitor Girl. <laughs> <laughs> they need a theme song. Computer Starting out with computer monitor girl. Action poses as they like run down the street. Oh, they really should hook up. Well, in Missouri, in uh, Festus, it's a town. Festus. 
Festus. I love that. <laughs> I would live there in a minute. I would totally live there. In Crystal City, there has been dolls precariously placed around the town. Ooh, now that creeps me out. And uh, some of them have been, like, had their heads removed or whatever. But um, they have been just uh, sat out and kind of posed in action poses. Some people thought they were kids and gone to investigate, like in parks. They're worried that they're going to start putting them in roadways or in front of buildings, mm. you know. So I'm I'm interested to follow this, see what comes of it. Because what if it's an avenging group that's like, hey, these are where pedophiles hang out. So they pose these dolls. That'd be interesting. But that's just me running away with the story. Oh, that would be scary. To but yeah. And they're clipping along down a freeway and there's a child in the freeway come to find out it's a doll yeah it's those full size uh, like you know when you see a bag in the middle of the freeway uh -huh. i avoid them at all times oh yes and so you don't know what's I'll inside yeah what if it's like puppies or or something that matters inside of there you know yeah i would feel terrible if i you know hit it hit something like that Whew. yeah yeah let's follow that yeah i want to follow that if anyone has any more information on it if we can root up a listener in Festus or Festus. in Crystal City. Just call us and tell, you, tell us you live in Festus. Yeah, reach out to us. Um, we would love to have you on and have a, kind of a direct story. I wonder, if, I wonder if the people who reside in Festus know that Festus <coughs> is such a great name of a city. Oh, I'm sure. There's a city do. named Dildo. Did you see that? Where? There's an actual city named Dildo. I, I don't know if they... I don't know if they... Uh, no. Is it in the United States? No. Okay. Yeah, let me see. Newfoundland. Oh. Dildo is an unincorporated, uh, unincorporated place on the island of Newfoundland. Uh, so it's in Canada. They put up a new sign that says Dildo, like the Hollywood sign. Dildo. It's, it's their newfies, so yeah, they know. <laughs> they speak English. They know. 